Apple are cancelling John Stewart. Is it because he's critical of China, which are necessary for their manufacturing process and entire business model? and AI, which are necessary for their entire business model? Or is it for some other reason that's not related to money and corruption? <coughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Wherever you are joining us now, we welcome you. Thank you for elevating your personal consciousness beyond the realm where you can be controlled by fear and desire continually. Now, the problem is when you embark on censoring free speech, curtailing and controlling the public discourse, it seems to be a process that gathers momentum. It's very difficult to stop. First of all, you say, well, I don't like that person. They shouldn't have free speech. And it's someone like, you know, Milo or Alex Jones or whatever. Then it ends up being more and more people that used to be mainstream. Anyone spring to mind? And then at the very end of the process, or not the end of the process, because I'm sure it will continue, John Stewart, valid voices that appear to be sort of respected across the political spectrum because of the work that he did with New York first responders around 9-11. He has blue collar support. He's an intelligentsia, respected guy. He's a mainstream guy. He's been in movies and all that. Now, Apple, who would have seen the acquisition of John Stewart's show as a kind of blue chip acquisition, something that made their streaming service reliable and credible, are having to get rid of him. Is that because John Stewart, in the end, is a critical thinker and will ultimately have to say stuff like, wow, what's going on in China? And maybe comment on the escalating tensions between the US and China and the complexity of corporate relationships that are transcendent of national boundaries and are ultimately an expression of a globalist ideology. And certainly the big tech companies like Apple, Facebook, Google, etc., are in that transcendent big tech realm. So ultimately you can't, can you, have a figure like John Stewart on your streaming service asking questions that will in the end lead to the regulation, dismantling, demonopolizing of organizations like Apple. If you start asking serious questions about Apple's business practices, you're going to come up with some answers that require intervention. So in the end, you can't have John Stewart. At least Apple can't have John Stewart. They've cancelled him. Let's have a look at that. We worked hard on this. Obviously, they conveyed it as a sort of a serious piece of punditry. John Stewart, very respected for his willingness to go out on a limb and talk about the Wuhan lab leak story, for example. He might not be on the same side of the aisle as a lot of you, but John Stewart, in my opinion, has a great deal of integrity. That's why he won't be allowed on Apple for very long at all. He's not allowed on it anymore. But where will this end? Let's see how the legacy media reported on this. John Stewart's Apple TV show The Problem with John Stewart is done after two seasons. Staff members say Stewart told them last night he and Apple executives agreed to pull the plug. The former Daily Show host had creative control over the show, but again, according to staff members, Stewart told them the company had concerns about the subject matter for the upcoming season. Oh, the subject matter. I wonder what subjects matter. The planned topics included China, Israel, and AI. Okay. So, John, what are you going to be talking about on the next series? Mm-hmm. 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 Just one moment, please. Have John Stewart killed. Sorry, what was that? No, I'm saying we're not making the show anymore, but God, it's been great working with you. You're very brave. I mean, it's not me. I wish it was up to me. We just can't, you know how it is, John. Because remember, all of these shows and platforms have to look credible. They have to look like they're telling you the truth. Like, that's why when you watch regular news on CNN or BBC, dum, 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 dum. Hello, it's the news. This is serious. This isn't just a TV show that's ultimately funded by Big Pharma. What we're doing now is important, and I'm definitely wearing pants under this desk. <laughs> Shut up. Apple TV Plus's esteemed talk show, The Problem with Jon Stewart, is reportedly drawing to a close after a fallout between the tech giant Apple and Jon Stewart himself. The problem with Jon Stewart is they've run out of subjects that aren't offensive to Apple's business model. The problem with Jon Stewart is one of the shows is about China next time. Yeah, we can't do that because all of our products are, how do we put this delicately, made in China. China. Despite the show's premiere being hailed as a major success for Apple TV+, the company and the renowned ex-Daily Show host have split due to creative differences ahead of the talk show's highly anticipated third season. That's why I think the culture has to generate issues that are divisive around which it can pick a side and just amplify that side. And these are usually subjects which I think could probably be less contentious if you had a decentralised system of government where you were able to say, well, seems like you people are very in favour of this way of living and you people are 
in favour of this way of living. Well, why don't you both carry on and leave each other the hell alone? But because no one's up for that idea for some mad reason, what we have to continually have is an ongoing culture war that's unwinnable, as well as the many military wars that are also, in my view, unwinnable for us. Unless, of course, you had some version of society where ordinary people were slaughtered en masse and autonomous machines could take over the roles. But there's no suggestion that that's going on anywhere. And if it is, you're not going to see it discussed on Apple TV. It would probably financially benefit from such a horrific dystopia. You have 20 seconds to comply. The signs of a rift started to emerge as reports surfaced about Apple getting antsy over Stewart's guest lineup on the problem with John Stewart. However, the fulcrum of the controversy seems to revolve around Stewart's plan to tackle issues such as artificial intelligence and China, which Apple reportedly flagged as contentious. The sudden faltering of the show, which was due to start shooting soon, caught the production team off guard. And until they can be replaced with Apple-style robots, you can't have that show. And also you would have to re replace John as well. But they're working on all of that. Default setting. Crush. Kill. Destroy. Apple's fears apparently stem from the fact that the tech behemoth has a future heavily pinned to maintaining a congenial relationship with China, and the tech giant bends over backwards to stand the good side of the Chinese Communist Party, although there's no evidence that they care about limbo dancing at all. When it comes to censorship of content in particular, Apple is happy to oblige the Chinese government in order to compete in the Chinese market. Do you imagine that any of these corporations that say they care about ecology, economy, social justice issues, care enough about those issues to make comp compromises when it comes to profit. Until you see that, what you've got is nothing. Part of their ingenuity with the kind of products that we all love, the brilliance, aren't they ergonomic? And God, weren't they well marketed? Inclusive, diverse, cool products that connect you across the world. I'm on a skateboard. I've got great hair. But the truth is that Apple don't care about any of those things I'm going to offer you. They care actually about profit margins. And if ever the ideology is at odds with the profit margins and the conditions of dominion that profit margins afford, they will hastily dispatched with all of their sort of rainbow coloured exclusive livery and paraphernalia will be marched right out the door quicker than you can say Tiananmen Square. This latest incident can be seen as an instance of corporate arm twisting to possibly cloak any criticism or controversial discourse that might jeopardise its strategy. Reports from The Hollywood Reporter suggest that Apple wanted the show to echo its official stance on these topics therefore asserting the power of censorship over the freedom to openly discuss the aforementioned issues. What's John Stewart supposed to do. And now, China. What a great country that is for workers. And certainly there's no issue with the Uyghur population who haven't been put into concentration camps. And certainly there's no child labor going on, which is a necessary byproduct of affordable devices that are ruining your life. Stewart didn't bow down to Apple's suppressive demands. He chose to assert his commitment to open discourse and freedom of speech by walking away from the show rather than compromising on the content. We are interrupting this vital stream about cancellation and the way that censorship is increasing because we need you strong. If we're going to change the world together, we got to be fit and healthy. Russell, how do you survive under the freight, the weight, the cargo of attack that you are enduring? I'll tell you how. I stay healthy. I stay awake. I stay strong stocked up on black forest supplements, including NMNs, a derivative of B vitamin, which plays a vital role in energy production. <sighs> I'm energized. Muscle regeneration. They're regenerating metabolism and gene expression in the body. If you are going to do a pull-up competition at some stage with RFK, you've got to have NMNs coursing through your mighty veins. NMN replenishes declining NAD plus levels, which drop around 1% a year, meaning a 50-year-old has roughly half of their youthful levels of NAD plus, which is found in all living cells and is essential for life itself. It's the intersection between the material world and the world of God. Now, now, of course, Big Pharma is trying to monopolize NMN by changing its status from a supplement to, I don't know, a weapon, no, a drug. And they want to charge a lot of money for it too. You know how they monopolize stuff. Obviously, their intention, they claim, is probably to protect you or something. But obviously, we know that they're trying to corner the market and prevent you from staying strong. Try NMN. An anti-aging and NAD plus booster. Go to blackforestsupplements.com forward slash Russell and use the code Russell. Full caps, two S's, two L's. These people are good partners. They want you well. They want you healthy. They want you strong. I take this every day. It keeps me sane. It keeps me strong. It keeps me going. I want you to have access to it as well. 25% off if you use the code Russell. Okay, let's get back into the censorship and cancellation crisis that is devouring what's left of the mainstream. 
The Times report does not delve into specifics about why the show's planned coverage of artificial intelligence in China triggered such strong reactions in Apple's executive echelons. However, it does underline the inherent conflict between corporate interests and the freedom of speech. Yeah, there is an inherent conflict. And in fact, when we talk about globalism here, we mean the conflation of these interests. When the state and corporations are entwined to the degree that the function of the state and the execution of policy becomes determined by corporate interest and is transcendent of national sovereignty in two ways, i.e. one, the population of a country can't prevent it, prohibit it, vote against it, and two, it's happening in numerous countries simultaneously across the world and you see simultaneous legislature passed to support this evident agenda, as with the many current censorship bills brought about by the censorship industrial complex, what you have is entirely at odds, not just with free speech, but with humanity itself. Free speech is just one of those principles that we'd all agreed was a non-negotiable even though we all recognise it could lead to conflict and people's feelings being hurt and listen to stuff you don't agree with. In fact, that's the whole point of it. Once you start rolling that back and saying, we trust this group to regulate free speech, then you're beginning to open the door to forms of tyranny. And when you see that there are institutions, entities and partnerships on this planet that have unprecedented power and a plain agenda, which is not about your protection and your service, then what you have is, yes, very much a conflict between corporate interests and free speech. That's perhaps one of the determined arguments of our time. It's not surprising that a tech giant like Apple would rather trim its content than jeopardise its relationship with a key market player like China, indicating a shift in power dynamics from content creators to corporate movers and shakers. I wonder what's going to happen to Apple with the apparent escalating tensions between US corporate interests and China, the ongoing apparent amplification of stress in that region. People lobbying, rallying even, for war and conflict in that region. What's that? that going to do to those corporate interests? Do they benefit from war? I mean, it just presents us with a lot of questions. Questions that John Stewart will not be analysing on his Apple show because Apple don't want those questions asked or discussed there. At the time of writing, Apple has yet to give a reason for the cancellation. Why are people assuming that the reason for John Stewart's show's cancellation is connected to China? Could it be some of these reasons? The nature of Apple's relationship with China. As Apple and its flagship iPhone have grown to global dominance over the past two decades, much of that has come with the help of... Yeah. Comments? It's... It's China. China! Like a certain little cold that really made its mark, like Beatlemania, the problem started... In China. China. Consider the following. Over 95% of iPhones, AirPods, Macs and iPads are still made in... China. Oh! In the second quarter of this year, more iPhones were sold in... China than in any other country, including the US. Oh, so it's their most important market. Last year, about 90% of Apple's total revenue came from... China! And it was 74 billion dollars. Okay, so there are some financial imperatives. I mean, Apple is one of those things that's so bloody enormous, we can't even really think about the scale of it. You can't conceive of Apple. That's why odd, extraordinary stuff like the cobalt mining, children in the Congo, digging that stuff up, just gets kind of, ugh, that's too much to think about. Just give me something simpler to think about where I can say, I'm on this side or I'm on that side, because none of us really are. We are on the side of children digging for cobalt in Congo. Well, actually, if you've got an iPhone, you are on that side and I've got an iPhone. One of the other contentious subjects that John Stewart is due to discuss in his now cancelled show is AI. So what's the relationship between Apple and AI? Of course, their products will presumably deploy AI, but is there anything else? Apple are part of a group of Silicon Valley companies helping the Pentagon in the AI arms race. Oh, well just Silicon Valley and an arms race. Nothing that heavy going on, just a race made out of nuclear missiles and stuff that's going to kill everyone. Nothing that contentious. The Pentagon Silicon Valley Defense Innovation Unit recently appointed Doug Beck, a vice president of Apple Inc., as its new director. What? Someone that used to work for Apple, working at the Pentagon now? That's not what happens all... Oh. Wouldn't you like to see John Stewart's take on that? Yeah, I would actually. I think John Stewart would be incisive, come up with some brilliant jokes about it. Not on Apple, he does doesn't. Beck, who served in the US Navy for 26 years before joining Apple, where he reported directly to Chief Executive Tim Cook, is regarded as key to accelerating plans to bring the military and Silicon Valley close together. Every night before I go to bed, I don't know about you, I pray, Lord God, will you please, please, please bring the Pentagon 
and Silicon Valley closer together. Can you enmesh more big tech giants with vast, unaccountable government institutions just to ensure that people like me and my children and all the people across the world really are tyrannized into absolute terror and shame, unable to openly communicate because of the monstrosity of the state? And thankfully, the Lord, whichever one I was praying to, appears to have answered. Apple presents itself, doesn't it, as a very modern company. Of course, it has to do that. It's about technology. It's one of the companies that's used to mythologize and instantiate that living myth that we are moving in the right direction. Through technology, through medicine, we're progressing. Look at those cavemen imbeciles. Look at those Rousseauian nut jobs living in copses, gathering berries, hunting for elk, bloody fools. We believe in the idea of progress and Apple, perhaps more than any other brand on the planet, represents that progress. Now, as long as you don't question human history or look at evidence for other civilizations or other crackpot whack job theories. That myth is a binding one. All of us are supposed to accept that we're moving in this direction. Things are getting better. In spite of the evidence, crumbling institutions, increasing tensions, things are getting better. As a modern company, Apple, of course, has to appeal to modern audiences, young audiences, and they have, of course, generated an ideology that I believe is a disingenuous one, one that has in it many principles that I would support, i.e. you should be able to express yourself however you want to, as long as you don't hurt other people. Values that I think most people agree with. But those two have become oddly contentious. The issue that Apple has when it comes to broadcasting content or platforming content is they can't have a truth teller and critical thinker on their platform because the truth is not good from Apple's perspective. The truth is actually quite unappealing and even prior to this season and the potential for hypocrisy or contradiction around John Stewart's potential opinions on China and AI, it was already the issue of the children laboring down minds, which is not really good for anybody. But what other woke problems do we have and where does this issue of censorship end if indeed this is a form of censorship. Apple, one of the woke corporations, continues to use slave labour in China to make its products, a 2021 report showed. Now, if you were woke, and if by woke you mean you care about sort of moral, ethical, humanitarian issues, you probably wouldn't use slave labour, I suppose. Chief Executive Officer Tim Cook has categorically denied the technology firm's sources from Chinese companies that use Uyghur slave labour in its production lines. Last year, he was asked directly by Congress if he could certify here today that your company does not use and will never use slave labour to manufacture your products. Mr. Cook replied, forced labour is abhorrent and we will not tolerate it in Apple. I agree completely. But an investigative reporter from the website The Information shows seven Apple suppliers have been accused of using slave labour. So I wonder if there'll be an investigation. Hopefully the legacy media are even now sending hundreds of investigators over there to do thorough, talk to everyone involved, make sure you get to the bottom of this because, you know, because you're so humanitarian and stuff, you're not going to want slave labour going on and you're certainly not going to want people lying about it because at this point it's just an accusation. So get investigating, guys. The information and human rights groups have found seven companies supplying device components, coatings and assembly services to Apple that are linked to alleged forced labour involving Uyghurs and other oppressed minorities in China, the report reads. At least five of those companies received thousands of Uyghur and other minority workers at specific factory sites or subsidiaries that did work for Apple, the investigation found. You see, in China, as in our countries, there will be loads of subcontracting to the point where it's like, oh, I don't know, who did those Uyghurs work for? Oh, it's difficult to say. There's no paper trail. But you can't have little Andel computers going around the world getting updated every 10 bloody minutes without cracking a few Uyghurs. That's the reality of the situation. We all know that and it's not even really working for us. Is it the continual flow of commerce, commodity and products? It's not like, do you feel any better? I mean, I love the phone. It's fantastic. But are we not losing something? And what's clearly being lost is any ethics and morality. What we have is the pose, the posture of morality. We really care. Hey, you shouldn't say that. What do you mean you did that? That's shameful. We really need to address that. Hey, it shows me on the phone, look, we can see all of the good work we're doing. Uh, where'd you get this phone? I don't know, this geezer. What's your name, mate? Well, I don't need to know his name, some sort of little Uyghur. Fuck him. The whole thing is built on lies. International human rights groups and the US have charged China with genocide against more than a million Uyghurs. Bloody hell, they're, they're actually being killed. The minorities are sent to concentration camps. That doesn't seem good. Away from their homes, in many cases sterilised. Apple, this is not sounding very woke. Subjected to live and work in poverty as a way for the Chinese Communist Party to cleanse them from their Islamic faith. Something eerily familiar about that reminded me of something, but no, I don't know what. The information associated with other human rights groups uncovered previously unreported public statements, photos and videos by Chinese local government offices and state-run media in China, as well as with unnamed employees to back up their reporting. People often point out when talking about dystopias the difference between George Orwell's 
Orwell's kind of communist version of dystopia and Aldous Huxley's pleasure-oriented, soma-induced stasis and slumber versus of dystopia in Brave New World. We've obviously got over here the Brave New World version, haven't we? Where we think we've got pleasure and devices and everything's slick and nice and people say the right words and trying their best to say the right things. And over in China, it's a bit more George Orwell's, a bit more boot in the face, standing there with your shopping bags in front of a tank. <laughs> But the fact is, dystopia is already here. How can I make such a claim? Well, when the pandemic happened and we saw how China were able to respond as a result of being a declared and obvious autocratic society, we first of all thought, we'll never be able to do that in our countries, but we managed just fine, didn't we? Turns out it's pretty easy to just switch off life like that. Stay in your homes, do as you're told. People didn't go, no, wait a minute, we're a democracy. Well, some people did, and those people were cancelled either then or just a little bit down the line, they found a way to cancel them. So what this shows us is, in the end, you can't have free speech at all. You might not like right-wing libertarian people. You might think, oh, I don't like them. But the fact is, Apple are unable to platform Jon Stewart because Jon Stewart will say things that Apple cannot have said on their platform. Not because Jon Stewart's not woke or Jon Stewart's not clever or not compassionate, but because Jon Stewart is critical of corrupt power. In a statement to the information, Apple said that despite the restrictions of COVID-19, we undertook further investigations and found no evidence of forced labour anywhere where we operate, we will continue doing all we can to protect workers and ensure they are treated with dignity and respect. Yet Mr. Cook continually pushed back against Congress lobbying to weaken a bill it was crafting, preventing US companies from using slave labour in China. Oh, why? Why would you do that? That doesn't make sense. In a December 2020 report, the Tech Transparency Project found one of Apple's most well-known iPhone suppliers was using forced Uyghur labour in its factories. Well, that's the end of that then. China became a key component in Apple's supply chain in the 90s and early 2000s because of the country's vast number of low-cost laborers. Apple seems willing to overlook China's ongoing human rights violations in order to have access to this cost-effective manufacturing base and the country's 1.4 billion consumers. It's also willing to overlook its commitment to John Stewart. I mean, of course it just has to. And it's not even, I suppose, like I'm really like blaming Apple. Apple's just the system. Apple is in itself a projection of a set of ideals. No, Apple came about as a result of some ideologies that are not regulated or not controlled or not pushed back on because of ideas like centralization, globalization, progressivism, materialism and rationalism. This is housed in a philosophy that I would say should be as open to interrogation as any particular religious ideology. You might say, we want to form the world according to Judaic law or Christian law or Islamic law. And you go, well, hang on a minute, should we look at this? Because rationalism and materialism have to be judged according to their results. And the results are in. And they ain't looking that that good. Global war, massive corporations that lie and don't own the fact that they require slavery, products that appear to be contributing to demoralizing and demonizing our consciousness. Is there a better way? Is there a different way? Can we attack it, critique it, or even discuss it? Not on Apple, you can't. Apple has a history of cowering to the Chinese Communist Party. In 2019, Apple removed HKMap.Live, an application pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong were using to track police from its app store. Wired reported around the same time that Apple began hiding the Taiwan flag from users in Hong Kong and Macau, reinforcing the CCP's One China policy. Additionally, Apple told some of its television producers to avoid portraying China in a negative light in their productions, as not to anger the CCP, BuzzFeed News detailed. Look, we all have alliances, we all have sponsors. I mean, you won't see me saying stick a mule the bad guys anytime soon, but you have to wonder what the consequences are when stuff's happening on a global scale. That's why what we need are independent media, demonopolized big tech organization, decentralized government. The more these things coalesce and come together, the more damage they do while continuing to claim to serve you. And we pass on the savings to the consumer. What savings? We pass on the dead Uyghurs to the consumer. I don't want them. Moreover, to comply with CCP, Apple removed the New York Times and other private networks from its Chinese app store and began storing Chinese iCloud accounts in China, making it easier for the government to potentially obtain information on its citizens, Wired reported. I wonder if they cooperate with other nations' requests of that nature. Let me know in the chat. Yeah, Apple wants Americans to believe it's woke, virtuous, and promotes a just world for everybody. It's probably about as true as Coca-Cola is youthful. Coca-Cola is delicious. Apple products are great, but they're not 
anything else than that. They are not any kind of ideal. That connection we're making in our own mind and we have to stop making it because the facts are Uyghurs are likely used for slave labour, children are mining for cobalt, not just for Apple but for other smartphones too and John Stewart, he's a real victim here, is not able to openly express his opinions on China or AI because it would be at odds with Apple's ideology and that is obviously frivolous compared to the exploitation of children or genocide but it is one of the components in the kind of globalism that we're continually critiquing here. You have no power. You cannot trust the media. You cannot trust the judiciary. You cannot trust the state. They will do anything they can to prevent you from mobilizing and awakening and opposing their systems of power up to and including cancelling any dissenting voice. Mr. Cook issued a statement in support of Black Lives Matter promising to push progress forward on inclusion and diversity so that every great idea could be heard, saying the company would donate to groups like the Equal Justice Initiative, which challenge racial injustice and mass incarceration. How bitterly hypocritical. Do you feel sometimes we live in a system where they just say stuff that's easy to say, that anyone's actually a dissenting voice is immediately vilified and shut down? Where is the evidence of anyone having real principles in these organisations? That's why when people gag Donald Trump, you don't immediately go, oh, he must have been saying some things that are so powerful that people don't want him to... You can't have any trust in these institutions anymore because you see now the modality, the mentality, the morality, the lack of ethics that undergirds their entire model. Big tech and big tech organisations benefit from global centralisation. The state benefits from global centralisation. None of them benefit from you becoming awakened and empowered and able to make your own decisions for your health, for your loved ones, for building community. Your freedom is their problem. And through the media, they will amplify the agenda of the powerful and close down dissent. They will narrow the bandwidth of your possibilities as much as they possibly can so that you're unable to be discerning, so that you're unable to awaken, so that you're unable to form alliances with other people who are basically just the same as you despite their cultural values or their religious values. We have more in common with one another than we do, obviously, than an organisation like Apple that will do whatever is necessary to maintain favourable relationships with China, including axing a flagship show just because there's a risk that they might say something that they don't like. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. Remember, we stream every day at these times. Join us then. Get involved. You can direct the content through your voice. That's what's different about us. We will be speaking freely on all of the issues that have been cancelled here and we will continue to connect with you forever. Support us directly if you can, but more important than any of that, please stay free.